Well, welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm your host, Jim Dempsey. Well, welcome everyone. It's hard to believe that we're starting the approach the end of February already. Seems like it was just January 1 and here we are. We're uh, getting ready to move into March. Uh, things are moving very quickly in my world. I would assume it's probably the same with yours. We're seeing events building. I've got a, a good number of events that I'm working on. Uh, not only dinner events, that's one night, but also weekend events that I've mentioned in the past that are extremely important. We're moving into a new cycle on a direct mail campaign that we're doing. Also working on some financial, some efforts with foundations, gathering financial information, and of course, meeting face to face with major donors and partners. So it really is a very exciting time. I really enjoy uh, the uh, move from winter into spring. It just kind of opens things up for everyone. People are excited to head out and to go to events and also to meet people and to start uh, doing some events. Well, let's dive into our question for the day. Our question today is from Peggy in Des Moines, Iowa. And Peggy asks, what are some things that I can do to increase the attendance of my event? Well, Peggy, thanks for that question. Uh, it, it's such a good question that I get it often, in fact, I get it so often that I just did a video on that. So I'd encourage you to watch that this Tuesday, the 21st of February, and you'll hear more in detail and more in depth about this. So Peggy, what I would recommend when we're talking about increasing the attendance for your event, number one, I would look at your entire recruiting strategy. What are you doing currently to get people to your event? Are you sending mailings? Are you sending emails? How often are you sending those, uh, those mailings and emails to people? How long are you contacting them? Are you using social media? Are you using other strategies such as recruiting of table hosts who are gonna invite their friends? All those things are so important. So I would start, first of all, with assessing how you are currently recruiting and how well those recruiting practices and procedures are doing. Oftentimes we find that nonprofit organizations, especially some that have been doing it for a while, really struggle with getting people to come on board, especially if you've done your event for a number of years, people get into the been there, done that. Kind of phase of their life and they don't see the importance of coming often to that so on the flip side you've got to make sure that your program is one that changes up every year that people look forward to going to they're adding new speakers new testimonies you're adding different aspects to your program that highlight what you are doing so all those things are just so important when it comes to identifying what things will draw people. But realistically, what we see is that although mailing pieces, hard copy pieces to people are still extremely effective and email has moved up in the importance of getting people's attention, uh, all those things are very, very important. Nothing at all tops friends inviting friends. So if you can get a handful even to start with, uh, and better yet, if you can get 20, 25, 30 or more individuals to agree to invite their friends to your event, not just any friends, not just warm bodies, but individuals who have a capacity and a desire to give. If you can get people to be hosts for your event or key inviters. It will be a game changer for your organization. Now, if you're currently doing some variation of that, I would say that you need to really look at who are you getting to be table hosts and how effective are those table hosts. Number one, I would start with what I refer to as a name storming session. And if you've done a name storming session or name gathering session, 
within the last five years, you need to probably do one again. What that means is that taking in and pulling in all of your, your key participants, staff, volunteers, board members, major donors, have them all in a room and name storm potential table hosts, individuals who they will invite their friends. We're not just talking about inviting guests. We're talking about finding individuals who are going to tap into new pools of relationships with people. So you may have someone who you've asked uh, to your dinner in the past. Well, they may be willing to be a table host and to invite their neighbors, their friends within their, um, within their church. You may have, they may invite coworkers, individuals, pools of people who you've never tapped into before. Those things are extremely effective. And friends inviting friends is, is without a doubt the key to this effort. You want to get them to find individuals who do have a capacity to give and it doesn't have to be at large dollar amounts, although that's very nice. All you have to do is find four other couples willing to give $250. So that's just a little bit more than $20 a month. All four of those, those couples, their $250 added up is $1,000. If you had $1,000 at every one of your tables, you do extremely well in the beginning, but trust me, you'll have tables that more than make up for the difference. You'll have tables that will give $5,000, some that will give ten, dollars some that will give fifteen dollars and $20,000 with all the people at their table. So those are extremely effective. Now, I don't mean to say that mailings and emails are ineffective. They are effective, but number one, they've got to grab people's attention. If you're using little five by seven postcards, consider moving up to the five and a half by eight and a half. That's half of a sheet of paper. Those are bigger postcards. They stand out. Make sure your invitation is for color, has the, um, has the speaker's bio and the speaker's picture on it. That just connects people to the speaker that they're going to hear. Make sure that your pieces go out often. Most studies will show that it takes seven touch points to get someone to come to an event. Typically for me, that includes an electronic save the date and a hard copy save the date, an electronic invitation, a hard copy invitation, an electronic, don't forget, a hard copy postcard, and then a bounce back that will come off your registration system or some kind of confirmation that we got your uh, reservation and you, uh, you will be expecting you then. And then also you've got other times you could do within the next day or so of your event or even the day of your event, send an email reminder to people. So all those kinds of things really will help you increase your attendance for your event. So I hope this answered your question, Peggy. It was a very good one. And as I said, please watch the video that I've got coming out uh, next Tuesday, the 21st of February. And I hope that if you are not already a subscriber, that you will please go down and subscribe and click the bell to be reminded of when the next video comes out. Follow me on Instagram at Jim W. Dempsey or go out on Twitter and ask a question out there. Also at Jim W. Dempsey, but use the hashtag Jim and Java so I know that it's part of this program. So I appreciate so much your tuning in and watching this program and I thank you for all your efforts with your nonprofit organization to make a difference in our world. And as I say, I'm here to help you get fully funded this year. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week.